So that means the lone show in town, Parkland at Horizon, which just so happens to be the district opener for both of these schools, Parkland, part of the Isleta Independent School District. You also have Horizon. They are out of Clint ISD. Both of these school districts choosing to play on during the county shutdown. It's our nine overtime game of the week. We say we uh, roll some highlights. Parkland, winners of their last two games. Horizon, one and one coming into uh, tonight and playing in their really first game since October 9th. So it's been a while for the Scorpions team, nearly a month in between games. You had uh, the fronts, the fronts. We're gonna have a pretty cool feature on them later on in the show. First quarter, that's Jonathan Barton with the easy touchdown to put the Matadors up first. Later in the half, check out Jacarius Lewis. The dual threat quarterback, he can hurt you with his arm. He can also hurt you with his legs. Calls his own number for the touchdown. Put Parkland up 25-0 at the half. Second half, I was talking about the arm for Lewis, right? Well, check out this play. Up top to Fernando Ruan for the score. Matt's in control, wire to wire. Good looking catch there in the back of the end zone. Have to shout out the defense in this one for Parkland. Horizon just couldn't get anything going against the Matadors. Front seven, that's Aaron Herrera on the stop for the Mats. And then how about uh, one more for good measure? Lewis to Marco Bonin. He's going to do the rest with his legs. Watch him. Whoop! Parkland gets the shutout win over Horizon. 38 0 the final. Matadors improving to 3 and 1 on the season. So Parkland wins their district opener, and it just always feels like. The opener means just a little bit more for head coaches. Certainly gets the Matadors off to a good start. In nine overtime, Stephanie Shields, she caught up with head coach Eric Franz after the game. here at Horizon. Parkland just not giving anything up to Horizon. Something Coach Franz says is key to opening up district play. The offense did a great job, but really uh, hats off to the defense. I thought the defense played fantastic. Um, you know, they were a little bit shorthanded, I think, and um, but still, our, you know, our defense flew around. Um, we didn't give up any points, which is always a great night. Um, our offense was solid. Um, you know, we, we turned the ball over once, which, which isn't good, but um, overall, I think we improved. Coach Franz says the team's improved over the last few games as well, but still has some challenges to overcome. The problem right now is that, you know, from week to week, you know, personnel's changing. Um, you know, we have some kids that are, that are being held out. We have some kids um, that are sick. You know, there, there's a bunch of different things going on. And um, with, with the, the day and time we live in now. Coach Franz also tells me looking ahead to next week against Isleta, he hopes to keep that consistency up as district play develops. Every game's important right now. You know, if... I mean, if it ends tomorrow, we're one and zero in district, and that's a big thing. Um, you know, we'll take one game at a time. Um, if they tell us we can play, we'll play. Um, if they tell us that we can't, then uh, we'll stop. But until then, you know, we're definitely blessed to be out on the field with these kids. And now let's send things over to KTSM 9 Sports anchor Colin Deaver for an analysis on tonight's game. All right, thanks, Stephanie. Hey, there's only one game in town tonight, so we're blowing it out. And I'm joined now by the maestro himself, Felix Chavez from the El Paso Times to help us break things down here. Felix, an impressive performance from Parkland tonight, especially defensively, 38-0 getting the shutout. What impressed you the most about their defense tonight? Just their aggressiveness. You know, they, they really came to play, and they, you know, they uh, stopped the run, which they needed to do. And, you know, they just made plays. You know, they're real athletic. You know, and, uh, you know, it's a good effort. You know, they struggled that first game against Eastlake, but the last three games, they've really played well. Offensively, you know, they've had to re replace a lot of people, not only uh, from last year's team, from a couple years ago as well. How do you feel like some of the newer guys have kind of stepped up and, and done a good job for this Parkland team offensively? Well, you'll start a quarterback with Jacarius Lewis. You know, I mean, he played a little bit last year, but he was more of a defensive guy. This year, you know, he can run. He's got a pretty good arm. He knows the offense. Uh, he's a smart kid, you know, and I think he, you know, he's different than the uh, Herrera from last year, but he's just, he's as effective, you know, especially with his legs. So I think he stepped up well. I think some of the other guys have done a nice job, and, you know, their system is set up to where guys just step up, you know, and even tonight they were missing a couple guys, but the next guy stepped up. They do not uh, uh, replace, they reload here at Parkland. Felix Chavez from the El Paso Times for Stephanie Shields and our whole crew here out at Horizon. I'm Colin Deaver. Andy, back to you.
All right, Colin, Stephanie, we even got Felix Chavez to thank, as well as our chief photographer, Ruben Espinoza. We're actually going to have both Colin and Stephanie back from Emperor Stadium when we return a feature on that France football family I was talking about, in addition to how the pandemic has affected recruiting high school football players, in-depth stories you're only going to see on Nine Overtime. Stay with us.